This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Sometimes we want to change the overall length of an audio file, but sometimes we want to get inside the audio file and change the internal timing of our performance, like where the singer says a certain word, or where the drummer hits the snare, or where the guitar player does a slide. So let's look at some options for that. And Elastic Audio is the best tool in Pro Tools for that. So to show you this, I'm going to create a new audio track. Shift-Command-N on my Mac, Shift-Control-N on a PC. And I want a mono audio track. And I will call this my Elastic Announcer. And it got most of that in there. And I'm going to activate this record button. And now I'm going to record myself just saying count off. Just saying a count off. I'm going to go to the transport. Make sure that I'm at 120 beats a minute. And I am. I want to hear a bar of count off. And I want to hear click. And let's just make ourselves a click track here from the track menu. And my level is OK. And I'm going to go ahead and print this. So I'm going to hit the F12 key. And one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And that's all I need. And let me listen back to that without count off and without click and without this in record enable. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. OK. so. I should probably trim this up a little bit. I'm in grid mode, so it snapped to the trim, and I'm in good shape. So Elastic Audio actually shows up over here in this menu that includes waveform and blocks and playlists. Analysis and Warp are here right now, but they're not active. They're grayed out because I haven't applied Elastic Audio to this region yet. So I do that down here with this little oil can looking fellow. And there are four choices for me. Verispeed, let me work from the bottom here. Verispeed is the old sort of turntable rocking the tape across the tape heads kind of sound. So we use that rarely. Monophonic is, if you're unfamiliar with music, if a flute were playing the same note all the time, that's monophonic. Or any kind of typical horn instrument that's only going to play one note at a time. So flute, trumpet, sax, monophonic instruments. Rhythmic instruments like drums or anything that's really percussive and doesn't have tonality involved in it. And then polyphonic. So if you're in doubt, choose polyphonic. That's the best algorithm that covers just about everything. So I'll choose polyphonic. And when I do that, I can see that it shows up here. And now if I click waveform, Analysis and Warp are not grayed out. They're available to me. So I'll choose Analysis. And I see that if I play this track, one, two, three, four. It found the beginning of my two, but it also got the ooh part of my two. So it got the t and the ooh. And I don't want these extra triggers that it put in here. So I'm going to roll over them and then option click them and make them go away. So. If I roll over this guy and option click it, that's my three. And I only want one for each one of these guys. And I really do want to get rid of that one in the front. So I think I have to zoom out here so that I can actually get onto it and remove it. And I'm going to option click and make it go away. OK, now I'm going to zoom back and get rid of that one, that one that one, and that one. And now I should have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and it looks like I'm in good shape there. So now I've set the markers, and now I want to move them around and show you how this elastic thing works. So I could actually fine tune them if I thought I needed to, and maybe this one could move up just a smidgen and be more like there. The rest of them look pretty good. So now I'm going to warp. And in warp, I can grab a marker and move it. And they call this telescoping, or you could call it 
accordion. And let me show you how this works. Probably just easier just to show you. I'm going to switch to slip mode and drag this fellow out like this. And you can see now that everything behind it is getting stretched out. And let me play it for you now. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. So I've changed my performance, but I've changed the overall length of it. So let me undo that. I just used Command-Z for that. You can use Control-Z on your PC. If I Control-click on it, I can lock this down. And I can lock down the one behind it. And now, if I change the middle one, I'm only changing the middle one. Because the two anchors are locked down on either side of it. So that's the critical step here, is to be sure that if you're going to change something in the middle, that the thing on the left and the thing on the right are locked down. So let me give you an idea of how this works, and I'll just play it for you. You can see that I moved the three marker, one, two, three, further back in the timeline. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. So let's do it on this one back here. I'm going to right click or control click here and here and here, and we'll move this guy up a little bit. There we go. Now I can move that up. And we have one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. So that's a way to affect the internal timing of the performance. Now, again, you can use this on vocals, you can use it on trumpet parts, you can use it on just, you know, any audio that's in there. The algorithm and the analysis is going to be influenced by which one of these you choose, whether it's polyphonic or whatever. And if you don't like what you chose there, you get this window that pops up and you can change the type of analysis that you do. So this gave me the result that I need and I'm happy with it. And if you want to move things on the timeline, you can see in this case, I have bars and beats and minutes and seconds open because if I wanted a particular word to land on a particular frame of film or second or simpty address, it's very easy to see how I can move this around to make it happen that way. So that's elastic audio, and it gives you the ability to adjust the internal timing of an audio file, not just its overall length.